Um, Michael Walker, um, Rebecca Long Bailey is, is very much going for, for this as as the Corbynite candidate. Uh, she's somebody who's taken on a lot of his ideals. Didn't the party show uh, very clearly? Didn't the public show very clearly at the last election that that isn't what the general public want from the Labour Party? Well, the public showed at the last general election that whatever Labour, whatever Labour offered, it wasn't good enough. But I don't think that is the reason to throw the baby out of the bathwater when it comes to the policies and, and also the positioning when it comes to, to politics in this, in this country. So, for me, I, I'd agree with, with Tom that it's unfair to characterise Keir Starmer as a Blairite. What, who he potentially reminds me of more, and I hope this isn't the case, as it seems like he's, he's quite likely to, to win, is Ed Miliband. So someone who wasn't quite confident enough to rally against the establishment, but also wasn't as right-wing as, or, you know, right-wing in terms of the Labour Party as, as Tony Blair. And so what I want to see from Keir Starmer is an ability to, to talk in terms of economic populism, to talk about how there is still, whether or not Labour lost an election in, in, in 2019, that doesn't change the fact that CEOs in this country still earn 145 times the amount of the average worker, that companies <laughs> like Amazon won't recognise trade unions in their workplace, work, work people until they near collapse and pay pitiful amounts of tax. So I do think the next general election will still be fought on these issues. Um, and but the, those, the but Labour those Party... were the issues that this election was fought on and Labour didn't win. The public well, so don't care the issues... about them as much as the left and the Labour Party. Well, I'm not sure that's true. So if we look at 2015, when Ed Miliband was standing and when... You know, it was, it, was, it was a more centrist platform. Yes, he was to the left of Tony Blair, but it wasn't exactly calling for, you know, the mass redistribution of wealth. Labour got 30%. In 2017, when they had a much more ambitious platform, uh, abolishing tuition fees, building loads of council houses and raising tax on the top 5%, they went up to 40%. Now, something went wrong between 2017 and 2019. Some people are blaming Brexit. Other people are saying that, you know, Jeremy Corbyn made a few mistakes as leader. Of course he did. Um, but I don't think that is a reason to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Interestingly, Keir Starmer at this point isn't saying he will. Keir Starmer isn't saying he should abolish and get rid of all the policy positions that, that Jeremy Corbyn introduced into the party or return the party to supporting. Um, I'm just yet to be convinced that he is confident enough to make that case when there's intense pressure for him to, to drop some of those policies and to become a bit more accommodating to this country's establishment. Tom, if, if Keir does manage to win, is, there, is that concern well-founded that actually he, he won't have enough support within the party uh, if he does get rid of a lot of the, of the very, very popular policies within the party to take it through to the next election? If, if he takes the, the party in a more right-wing direction, you may well lose a huge swathe of membership. Well, I think there's a, there's a general consensus that, uh, that the last manifesto, um, whether people liked the policies or not, but it, it, the last manifesto was a lot too broad, much too broad. It had too much in it. It had things in it that simply could not have been been enacted without, you know, a, a two-term majority Labour government. It was too um, too ambitious. Not because um, not because the policies were necessarily wrong, although I think people will have. A, you know, disagreements about, about individual policies, but because it physically could not have been achieved by any Labour government with any majority over the period that it, that, that it gave itself. I think one of the, one of the difficulties with, uh, with looking at the, the vote share that the Labour Party achieved over various elections is that, you know, that's true as far as it goes, but in the same period, the Tories were putting on vote share election after election after election. It went up under Theresa May, it went up again under Boris Johnson. The next leader of the Labour Party has to start making that vote share of the Tories go down. And that is partly about what policies that leader has, but it's also about uh, being able to demonstrate that the questions that they are trying to answer as, leaders, as the leader of the Labour Party are the questions that the, that the electorate thinks need answering in, those, in, in that election. And whatever you think of Labour's um, policies at the last election, it's pretty clear that the country did not broadly see it as an election about whether those ideas were the right ones or not. It's always an election about mm. whether we should get Brexit done, which was the, to the, the, Tories, uh, the, the Tories' big slogan. Michael, it's the, the job of the next leader is to define the terms of the next mm. election as well as to have the policies that will win it. Michael, in his first answer, Tom talked about Keir Starmer's leadership qualities. Do you think Rebecca Long-Bailey, um, do you think Lisa Nandy have those leadership qualities? Do you think that, that people looking at the Labour Party could see any of those three candidates in number 10? Uh, in a way, I think it's a bit too early to say. I don't think I don't look at any of those candidates and think they're the full article ready for a general election tomorrow. There will be five years until the next general election. I mean, the attraction of Keir Starmer is that he's got an incredibly impressive CV. He rose to the top of his field and became director of public prosecutions. One concern, though, is a good lawyer doesn't necessarily make a good politician. So many of the things, many of the things written about Keir Starmer when he was DPP is that he was very good at detail but struggled a bit more with vision. It's when you're leading a party that you need the vision side. 
Um, I think Rebecca Long Bailey has demonstrated she can very competently put across the argument that we need radical economic change in this country so that we have a more equal society. Climate change will be a much bigger issue in 2024 than it was in 2019. And she is perfectly positioned to take that argument to the country to say that it's only the Labour Party who are willing to take on the establishment and vested interests who are capable of tackling the climate crisis in a meaningful way. OK, we're going to have to leave it there. Michael Walker from Navarro Media.